loves to rock and roll and jive. But if you don't like the show, then she'll soon let you know. She'll even knock you down or she'll come round and put you low. Well, I might rip your arm off. Don't hurt me, honey. Might even tear your leg off, honey. I might even rip off all your money. So all those kiddies not watching, but well, your whole honey jack's coming and she don't give a kill. Oh, darling. Hello. Oh, tonight on the show, I'm going to have... Have a shave. A shave? Yeah, well, you should have. What do you mean? You've got a moustache. Oh, I haven't got a moustache, have I, Arthur? No, I did, Jack. Just a hair lip. Just a hair lip. <laughs> oh, you... <laughs> you. <laughs> what is it? It's an eyebrow. On me lip. Well, it's a lip brow. It's a moustache. Oh, ladies, don't have moustaches. I had an uncle who had one. What did you do with it? Give us a clue. I give up. That ain't thing to do, eh, Jay? Oh, oh, no, 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 get up on here. Oh, get off me, you pig. What? Oh, now the scissors. Oh, oh still. Oh. Let me go. Now put them back quiet. No. Oh, still, eh, Jay? There you go, eh, Jay? You're not going to blow up my face. No, no, don't hurt. Because, because we'll blast out every single hair. Oh. Ah, uh, well, we'll reduce ourselves. Why? What's your price now? Boom! And then when we're small enough, we'll crawl in your moustache and we'll blast out each hair just like tree stumps. But it's my face, not a bloody tree stump. <laughs> <laughs> It'll grow and grow and grow all over your beautiful face. All over my beautiful face. All right, you can do it if you promise not to disfigure me. How could I, Cotton? Boom! <laughs> well, how are we going to reduce ourselves? So eat. No, 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 no. In a steam bath, it'll only take half an hour. But what about my piano? You can't reduce a piano in a steam bath. Wait, how are we going to reduce Andy Jack? <laughs> I think she's beautiful. Do you suffer from bad memory? If you do, then remember that others like you have been helped by Memory Incorporated. <laughs> Phone them today on 430473. 6604-7673. 9-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5
Watch it, you little mongrel. Get out of me. We would if we could, buddy. Well, now am I going to get him out of me? It's no use. We're lost inside Auntie Jack. Lost inside Auntie Jack? London, Rome, Paris, or Zurich? <laughs> <laughs> Look at our young, gay, carefree, or lost. 20 Trips Personal Happy Guides are there to help you. Hi, gang. I'm Bobby, your Trendy Trips Personal Happy Guide. All right, follow me for the tour of a lifetime. Yeah, but we want to get out. As quickly as possible. Oh, I see, the direct route. Well, let me see, you came in through there, and I think possibly the most direct way would be straight out through the, um... Oh, no, I don't think the little lady would like that. <laughs> would you be interested in the all-inclusive ear, nose, and throat tour? No! no. With, of course, the added bonus of the um, panoramic view from the nostril. Hey, we can get out of the nose! Oh, yeah, we'll, we'll take it! All right, follow me. <clears throat> now, on our right-hand side, we have one of Auntie Jack's... Beef eaters! I'm the guide, smarty pants. Now, these men are actually force-fed beef up to 24, 25 hours a day. Hey, notice me new hairstyle? <laughs> It's not real cream, it's pork fat. <laughs> Beefy just taught him to me. Hey, imagine them blokes wearing tribe bunnies. <laughs> here I am at the seat of learning. Now, many great meat thinkers sat here. I mean, great philosophers like Lamb, Bacon, and Ronald Rissold. Now, Ronald Rissold, poor young bloke, starved up in one of those garrets up there until he developed his great Rissolian philosophy and the mincing machine. Now, he made his great breakthrough in about, uh, I think about 1836, when he developed these little things that he thought were mince patties. But while later, to be posthumously named after him as the famous Australian Risso. <laughs> Muscles of face. Here I go now, I'll become a part. What am I? Jane Fonda's bust. Close. I give up. Rock Hudson's nose. <laughs> Come off! <laughs> Oof, you've been eating garlic. <laughs> Riding upon a pig, he 
fondled we, so we sold the <coughs> and bought the <coughs> and the great <coughs> was locked in a cart with the wee hee hee and the ha ha hee. He took it to his wife to be. He said to his woman with a giggle and a nudge, I brought you a grand. <coughs> and she banged her head and said, Thank you, Ned. And she went to look in the cart and she saw the grand. <coughs> with a scream and a yell and a nelly nelly nell, she hit the with a fan. And the Ned came ringy when he ran. And written on the ground with a finger, Ned he found. Where were you when the <coughs> hit the fan? <laughs> Oh, they're showing dirty movies inside of me. I get out of me. Ooh, ooh. <laughs> Cow. Well, gang, here we are at the Bedfastal. From here, you have a view almost all the way to the... Ah! <laughs> She's ripped your arm off! <laughs> What's on in Wollongong? <laughs> Bonsai people. Merv Fumble, the Illawarra expert, has made great strides towards bonsaiing people. He began experimenting with caterpillars and is now ready to try his techniques on any volunteers who might care to offer their bodies. He says, prune at both ends of the subject, a little nip of the toes to begin with and a sliver of ear. Ah! The saving on clothes alone could be a boon to anyone on a fixed income. <laughs> Morning, Jack. Oh. Well, here we are at the entrance of Jack's brain. Now, nothing much has happened here for a long time. <laughs> All right, follow me. Walk this way. Morning, Jack. Lovely weather we were having, Jack. Yeah. Oh, boy. oh, just what I needed, Jack. Thank you. Mmm. Third run this week, Jack. <laughs> oh, here we go up to the front of the bottomy area. Follow me. Have a Paranoia. What does that mean? Why are you asking me? <laughs> So you want to enrol in our faculty, Fitzpatrick? Yes, sir. I'd like to follow in my father's footsteps, sir. Uh, but your father was one of the finest graduates from this university. I know, sir. I think I could handle it, though, sir. It's no use thinking, boy. You've got to want to be a bus driver. <laughs> Do, sir. Why? I want to face the challenge. I want to flirt with danger and outdoor life with a brisk breeze in my face. And? And? Oh, and the status. <laughs> Good. Oh, now, just a few simple questions. How did you get here? Uh, by taxi, sir. Hey! Sorry. Seems to be a family weakness, doesn't it? Your Uncle Ron is a taxi driver, isn't he? <laughs> yes, sir. Do you have a favourite bus driver? Bulger. Bulger. Sir Henry Bulger. <laughs> Fine driver. Now, boy. What would Sir Henry do under these circumstances? An old lady wants to get off the bus. But Sir Henry has already closed the doors. Drive on seven stops and then let her off. Wrong. Six. Wrong. Don't be stupid, boy. Regulations. Five. But you certainly got the spirit there, son. Thank you, sir. Sir, I want to specialise. I want to drive a one-man bus. <laughs> That's rich. You know you have to complete two undergraduate courses, a three-year conductor's diploma and a three-year driving degree, a total of six years. <laughs> please. Essential language for the well-rounded conductor. This is a fez. But you're not asking the transportee for his hat. You're asking him for his fez. 
It's a Turkish expression meaning money. Right, now we'll try it. Fast, please. No, 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 no. Fast, please. It must be delivered as a demand. Don't emphasize the please. Fast, please. Fast, please. Good. In term two, we'll go on to the expression, go up the platform. And in term three, the much more difficult, Madonna, stand up, please. With suitable arm and hand gestures. <laughs> A couple of feet apart and move with a gently rolling motion. First from your left leg and then to your right. First from your left. Where? Yep. Then to your right. Where? Just keep it moving. Just Mom. keep flowing through. Mom, That's I it. did. I did. Yeah, all right, wise guy. Now try it with the bag and the book. Oh. <laughs> right. I'll be a driving master for the next three years. I'm the acting professor of transport. B.O. Bachelor of Omnibology. Doctor of Driving. D.R. I-V-I-N-G. Now, to be a driver, you've got to want to be the man out in front. A leader, so to speak. So over the next year, we're going to be practising posture and seating. OK, Fitzpatrick, sit down. Sit down! Come on, boy. Get, sit down there. Now, treat. Legs up. Right. You don't drive a bus with a briefcase, lad. Get your chin up. You've sat through the last year with flying colours. Congratulations. Get up. Oh, thank you, sir. <laughs> right. I'm now going to introduce you to the wheel. Oh, it's not a briefcase, Fitzpatrick. It's a bloody steering wheel. Get it up. <laughs> oh, wow. Wow. Beauty. Right. Start your engine. Forward. Turn left. <laughs> Reverse! Don't forget your hand signals! Turn right! You turn! Not all at one point! For your final year, I'm going to learn your dormanship, right? Now, I'm going to test your reflexes. I'll stick my head through this door, try and catch me. Go! Miss! Listen, when I was your age, boy, I could swat a fly in mid-flight. Try it again! Go! Miss! Again! Oh! Congratulations. You've all done very well. Our leading student has been selected for the experimental division, the one-man bus. Congratulations, driver Fitzpatrick. <laughs> well done, lad. Thank you, sir. Are you prepared to have the operation? To me, happy birthday to me, happy birthday, dear Neil. Hello, hello. Do you mind if I sit down? No, no, by all means, friend. Hmm? I'm waiting. What for? For a surprise. Oh, all right, shut your eyes. <gasps> no! <gasps> well, my best friend wouldn't do that. Oh, well, I did. Well, then you're not my best friend. Aren't I? You're only a passing acquaintance. Oh, but you're my best friend. Of course I am. I'm the only person you know. Oh, well, I've got, I've got lots of friends. Who? Oh, but it's you, uh, and uh, I've got lots. Oh, lonely people never have friends. I've got, I've got so many I can't even name them. Who? The names escape me. Oh, you haven't got any friends, have you? It's very hard to remember them all being a hectic socialite. Oh, I'm one, I'm one. What? I'm a socialite person. You're not as social as me. I have lots of friends, but not as many as me. Cause I'm having a party tonight for all of my friends. Oh, you remembered. Thank you. Oh, I didn't invite you. It's only for my best friends. Oh, I'm your best friend now that you're having a party for my birthday. Is it your birthday? Yes, the 30th of February. <laughs> then it must be mine. Oh. oh, I'm sorry, I forgot. Oh, don't be sorry. I forgot it was my birthday. Oh. Well, let's have a double birthday party at your place. Well, it'd be a bit crowded with all your friends. Oh, I haven't really got any friends. Yeah, well, I haven't got a party. <laughs> you lied. I didn't lie about being your best friend. Well, let's celebrate at your place. I haven't got a place. Why don't we go to your place? Oh, oh I haven't got a place either. But I've got a present. For me? 
No, I made it for me. I didn't think anyone would remember. Happy birthday. Oh, thank you. I haven't got a present, but I'll give you a song to sing called Errol and Neil. Oh, happy birthday to Errol and Neil. Best of luck to you both. May your futures be grand. Good luck, Errol and Neil. Thank you for the song. Oh, that's all right. Oh, we're best friends, Errol and me. Yes, we are. And my friend Neil talks to me in the park. And we sit on our own and sing songs, Errol and Neil. Oh, we're best friends, Errol and me. Yes, we are. We sit in the park and sing songs until dark. And we sit all alone. Happy birthday, Errol and Neil. Thanks for the cake. Thanks for the party. Thanks very much, everyone. Thank you for coming. Thank you. We have lots of friends. We're always out, Errol and Neil. Europa Films presents an unsavoury continental film which has been dubbed to protect Australian audiences. Arr. I'll be for the barbecue, fellas. I why aren't you wearing fancy dress, Colin? Arr. I've got those kicks of the birds. Oh, no. I told you it was pirate night. Anyway, no grog before the race. Arr. <laughs> so you never mind. If we lose a Sydney to Hobart yacht race, where are our RS? <laughs> Truth, it's my wife. Oh, shovel flood, Zoe. My husband's such a bore at these young live parties. Would you like to come on board Gretel for some entertainment? What to Hobart? Well, what do you reckon, Gidget? Oh, I don't know. I'd rather stay here and drink the grog. <laughs> yes, hard work gives you a first. Uh, hey, listen. Don't mention anything about parrots to the captain. Look what happened to the last bloke you did. That's a bit much. Uh, step this way, will you? I'd like you to meet the captain. Ah, Jim Lad. He's gone tropo. Hey, where's your parrot? Ah, <laughs> there be yours, Jim Lad. Ah, there they be. Can I? I'm Long John Silver, the stockbroker. Five hundred Poseidon chest. Whoever finds me parrot. Jeez, I could be, and I could fancy him. There's a parrot. Have a go. Miss the parrot. Have a go with a gun. Truth, not me, the bloody parrot. That'd be the starting pistol. Who's I reckon he's off his bloody scone myself. So you be the singing bobber, Daryl. <laughs> All right, follow me. Keep it down, gang. There are people trying to sleep in here. Now, that is the center of Auntie Jack's brain. But it's a pea. It may look like a pea, but it's a brain. <laughs> what, are you, what are you doing? Hey, listen, now, don't drink the water. You shouldn't be drinking. Oh, God, I'm getting out of here. Yeah. Oh, well, me little lovelies, that's the end. I'll be by myself next week. Please forgive me for eating me little friends. It was only an accident. Oh, oh, all the pain. What's happening? It must be the water. We're swelling up to normal size. We better get out of Auntie Jack before we swell right up. Oh, we had all the pain. <laughs> Maybe run the show. G'day and welcome to the Kid Eager Show. Starring me and my friends Finn Arthur and Flange Desire. And Arnie Jack. Arnie Jack? Oh. Very bloody oh. touching, Kitty Poo. Is that a joke? Oh, 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 I'm laughing. Oh, oh. Oh, Arnie Jack, how did Why? Little pieces all over the floor. Why? Shut up, there'll be no explanations. And as for you lot out there, forget whatever you've seen. 
no stage that I ever give permission for myself to be blown into millions of little pieces all over the floor, and until I do, it's not gonna bloody what happen. <laughs> so stop talking amongst yourselves, or I'll come out there and rip your bloody arms off. <laughs> not you, Arthur. Watch it. <laughs> Get it.